How's it going everybody? Boone here. Today I want to show you seven different tips you can utilize when working with photographs in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now I'm going to be breezing through these tips pretty quickly, but in the future I will be uploading more videos that will go into some of these tips in greater detail, so be sure to subscribe to my channel. So for our first tip, we're going to talk about scale to frame size. So when working with photos in Premiere, I have a photograph here. Let me drag it down here into my timeline. Now you'll notice that it automatically fits in our 1920 by 1080 frame size here. And it does that automatically. Now let's say we don't want it to do that because if you look over here, the resolution of this photograph is quite high. It's much higher than the standard video HD settings here. So if you control click or right click right over your clip, you'll go up here and you'll see scale to frame size. Now if I uncheck that, then boom, our photograph is now at full resolution and we can go into our effect controls and adjust it accordingly. Let's scale it down and move it around and it's good to go. For the second tip, let's talk about the duration of our still image here. Right now it's set to just about five seconds in length and this is the default. So to change this, go up to your preferences and go to timeline and once you're in timeline, you'll look over here at some of the default durations. You can see video transitions, audio transitions, and then the third one is still image default duration. So let's say we want it longer than that. We can really change it to whatever you'd like, and you can even specify frames if you need. So we're going to change that to 10 seconds. For tip number three, we're going to create a quick time lapse with the automate to sequence feature. So if you look over here, I have a sequence of images from NASA. These are photographs shot from the International Space Station. And I have a sequence of 225 images that I want to create a quick time lapse. So let me go down here to my timeline, get rid of this photograph, bring our playhead to the beginning, and then I'm going to go back up here to the program monitor and select all of these photographs. You see we have 225 images selected. Now if I go down here, there's a button here at the bottom of the project panel, Automate to Sequence. I can click that and it shows us our Automate to Sequence dialog box, which you can go through these preferences. There's a variety of different ways you can send your photographs to the timeline. You can resort the order, how you want it. You can change the frame rate for each image. I'm going to keep it at one frame a second to keep our, our or, I'm sorry, not one frame, uh, one frame per still. And we select OK, and it brings our photographs in. So looking pretty good. For tip number four, we have a very similar way of creating a time lapse. So I'm going to create another time lapse, but a little bit differently. So I'm going to close this folder, and I'm going to bring these in using import image sequence. So if I double click in the project panel, it's going to bring up the import dialog box. And I'm going to go over here. Here on our local drive, we have the 225 images. I'm just going to select the first one. And if you look down here, I have image sequence selected. Now, you ha I, I just have the first one selected. Now, there's a few things here. You have to have these marked sequentially, or the file name sequentially. And it doesn't seem to work with JPEGs, so it, but it definitely works with TIFFs. I don't know the specifics of all of the import image sequence, um, but it would not work for JPEGs with me. So. And if you select multiple ones, you can't use image sequence. You only have to select the first one in the sequence and then select import. It's going to bring it in as a video file. And now I can, let me zoom out here. Now I can grab this and bring it in. And now we have a video file as compared to the automate to sequence feature where we have all the images. So now what's cool about this is I could go over here to this video file. Let's take a look at it. And it's not playing back real time, unfortunately. But if I grab the rate stretch tool, I could quickly grab the end of this and speed it up if I wanted to. Very easily and very quickly. There, much easier than trying to deal with this where I'd have to actually nest this one and then speed it up and slow it down. So it's just a different way to work. For tip number five, I want to show you how to animate a photograph. So let's go back and get our first photo. Bring it down here. And if you go into the effect controls panel and select the photograph, and I'm going to scale, I'm going to turn this off again. And now what we want to do is this kind of Ken Burns effect. We want to bring this photo to life um, by doing a quick animation. So what we're going to do is add some keyframes. We're going to add some in and out keyframes on a variety of different properties. So what I usually do is I'll do a position scale, and you can do rotation if you want, but I'm just going to have these 
position and scale. So we have these keyframes. Let's go to our starting position. Let's say we want to just have it. We want to have the photograph start here, and then we'll move the playhead off the keyframes, and then we'll put our endpoint, which is we want the photo to kind of come up, and we want it to zoom out just a little bit. So let's manually type in the scale of like 90. Let's do 80. And then there we have it. We have a quick animation, and we can just move our keyframes where we want. And now let's take a look at this. Ah, sorry, this is playing very choppy. And we can make this a little bit neater by grabbing our keyframes, control click, and do some temporal interpolation, ease out, and ease in. This is just going to smooth out those keyframes. And now if we put the playhead here, and now that's a smooth animation. For tip number six, I want to show you how you can do a down and dirty 3D effect on your photo. Really simple, really short and sweet. So to do this, to have this effect work properly, you do need to have the scale to frame size option checked. Otherwise, when you start to apply the effect, it doesn't really work correctly. So now if we go to the effects panel, I can type in basic to bring up the basic 3D effect, which is under video effects perspective. Now I'm going to drag that over here onto our photograph and you'll see here there's a variety of different effects all of which by the way you can keyframe to create an animation so you have swivel tilt and distance uh, hold on, let me open this up so you can actually read distance to image and then of course we also have show spectral specular highlights sorry I'm not a 3d guy I don't know the I don't know the terms, but now that I have that checked, you can see when I start to move this around, there's a light effect if that's what you want. And again, you can also animate the highlights. Very cool. So for tip number seven, I want to show you how you can import a Photoshop file, which is a really powerful thing that you can do here. I'm going to create, as I said before, this is one of the tips where I'm going to create a standalone video on how to do this because a lot goes into this. So I'm going to double click in my project panel to import. I have a PSD file version of my photograph here, which has a few layers. So I'm going to click Import. It actually has three different layers. And when you import a Photoshop file, there you have four different options. You can merge all the layers. You can merge specific layers. You can import a specific layer by itself, or you can import everything as a sequence. So let's see what happens when I pick sequence. It allows me to pick whatever, whatever layers I want to import. I'm going to go ahead and import all of them. And we could actually change our, our, si our footage dimensions to the size of the layer, but right now it's one and the same. So if you click OK, it brings in a folder with all of the individual layer files as image files. And it has our sequence here. And if we open up the sequence, you'll see it has all of our layers and it's named the tracks. So this is really cool. And as I said before, I'm going to be posting a video on this topic alone, and I'm going to go into a lot more depth of what you can do with this. So there you go. Seven tips to utilize when working with photographs in Adobe Premiere Pro.